I do want to get into talking about these cosmetic procedures because you sat down with the surgeon um, and you discussed vaginoplasty, vaginoplasty. I might be saying that wrong on a 16 year old. So I mm -hmm. want to illuminate that for audiences and have them take a listen to the conversation. What's the, what's the youngest patient that you've operated on? The youngest patient I've done vaginoplasty on um, What's vaginoplasty? is age 16. Do you worry that minors just don't understand enough about themselves? They're not neurologically developed enough yet to make permanent life altering decisions? Absolutely not. I want to punch her in the face. You did not punch her in the <laughs> face. I don't know how, given that you have four children. Um, when I, what I hear when I listen to that is I mutilated a young child's body. That procedure, for people that don't know, they're taking a piece of your colon and they're putting it in the front so that it looks like, keyword, the keywords here, looks like it's a cosmetic procedure, um, a vagina. Hmm. How do you feel sitting across and hearing that, that uh, yeah, I mutilated a child? Yeah, that was uh, that was that was probably the the hardest interview we did in, in certain ways, and, and we, right, with our you know the the team after we left that one, we were just kind of like sitting there in silence, <laughs> just kind of trying to absorb. Like the world is over. You're, you're, you're really looking. You kind of sitting there staring into to pure evil. I think, as you point out, I I totally agree with that. And what we have to realize, by the way, is that um, this is actually very common, uh, especially with girls. The the you know, so-called sex change surgery. Very common. Top surgery, chopping the breasts off of, of girls is uh, increasingly common. And uh, they're doing and the it. the term they're using is, it's reversible. Even though they are chopping the breast off, but they're saying it's reversible. How do you reverse that? In California now, Maybe down I'm not a professional. Age, I don't 13, know. is when they start with, uh, with girls. Um, and that's why it doesn't, I actually, the, the fact that you just cited that suicidality goes is is the highest after surgery. That makes sense to me intuitively. I hadn't seen that study, but I we were told that by someone in the in the film also, which makes a lot of sense because you know the underlying mental problem is still there after surgery. But now you've added on this extra level of you've mutilated your body, and there's mm -hmm. going to be regret and everything that comes with that. Um, so it, it makes a lot of sense that that would be the case. Yeah, it's 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 very scary, and I love that in this documentary you actually went to Africa because. My husband, all the time, we talk about various social issues. He spends a lot of time in Africa because he hunts and in the bush. And he always says to me, when you get to Africa and you start talking to these locals, they don't even understand the concept of gay. And I have this idea that we actually have become so progressive, we've become regressive in society. Like we've just gone like forward, forward, forward. And actually now we're like behind backward. Um, it's the reason why we're acting like medieval creatures wearing, you know, masks as if we're like hanging garlic and warding off vampires, right? <laughs> like these things don't make any sense medically. Um, uh, and it's sort of the same way when you look at this transgender where they can't even grasp the concept of what you're saying. They're laughing at you like you're a crazy person, like you're somebody who's arrived from a medieval period and don't, doesn't understand basic facts and how things work. That has got to, it's stunning to, you went to a tribe and we're supposed to believe that they're backwards, right? They don't know anything. We're living in this forward futuristic society and they're basically laughing uh, as you're trying to explain to them um, what transgenderism even is. Yeah, that's part of the reason, well, mm -hmm. I'll admit that one of the reasons we went there was to troll the libs, you know, uh, because it's just, uh, it's very funny to go and have African tribesmen saying these things because the left can't, what, what are they going to do? It's like, it's racist to, to criticize. So that was part of it, but also, but but I think more so it was, um, it was kind of to test this ridiculous idea from the left that they claim, they say that the so-called gender binary is a Western colonial construct and you know the idea that men are men and women are women that's 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 our unique western thing and you go outside of that bubble you're going to find that people are very fluid and open and progressive and then of course that's not the case but we said let's go and test it out anyway and we found the exact opposite is the case that actually gender ideology is a very insular uniquely western modern thing it doesn't exist outside the bubble and it's very revealing when as it happened to me because i'm asking these questions and they assume because i'm asking that i'm actually confused and they think that I'm just a, an absolute maniac. <laughs> they were nice about it. I mean, they pitied me like a child, but they were they were nice about it. But now I, they put me in the position of, of having to, like they were demanding explanations from me of how all this works. Uh, and so now I'm trying to explain it to them. 
And I think nothing reveals the absurdity of an idea more than trying to explain it to someone who has no shared frame of reference to you. Exactly. Like you're, you're starting from the from the ground up like, trying to explain this concept. And uh, it quickly becomes obvious how vacuous the idea is. Somewhere in Kenya, people are just talking behind your back being like, we oh, met yeah. the craziest yeah. freaking person from the West. You're not even going to believe what this idiot said. Uh, and I think it's, it's such a brilliant thing to do because it really showcases just how stupid we've gotten in America. Uh, none of it makes any sense and everybody knows it. It's basic instinct to know that none of this makes any sense and it's extremely foolish. I do want to get to um, the person that you identified as the hero of the film. Um, so I guess let's actually just watch a clip of Scott Nugent. Hmm. Every child that they convince is is transgender and in need of medical transition, it generates $1.3 million to pharma. And we're believing a pharmaceutical company, Lupron, hormone blockers, reversible, so they say. Well, the truth is, is that in 2003, Lupron was sued and deemed a criminal enterprise by the US government. They paid the most fine of any pharmaceutical company at that time, $874 million, wrote a check. Is Lupron chemical castration? Yes. Yeah, doing we're giving it children. to pedophiles, aren't we? We're giving it to people that are dying, and we're giving it to kids telling them that they were born in the wrong body and it's completely safe. Stunning. Yeah, that's uh, Scott Nugent. So that's a female who transitioned to man. And in fact, she says, uh, one of the only honest people we talked to, she says that I transitioned to appear like a man, but I'll never be a man. That was her, her words. Um, and now having gone really through the procedure as an adult um, and so many horrific complications from it. Mm -hmm. And she says that this is ex these are experimental procedures that we're doing to people, including kids. Mm -hmm. um, and there's really, there's an interesting dynamic between, like we, we talked to the so-called experts who are proponents of gender ideology and they're so evasive and they won't answer any questions and they run out of the room. And then you talk to the opponents of gender ideology, people like Scott Nugent, and incredibly open, willing to talk about anything. And I think when you have an issue and one side doesn't want to talk about it, the other side is willing to talk about it, almost already, like you don't even need to know anything else. You already know who's, who's probably on the right side of it. Absolutely, because they're... I think I heard a speech by Donald Trump where he said um, experimental drugs to actually cure diseases were not allowed in America. And then when he came on seat, he tried to, you know, put that into um, into the law where you can easily get these drugs tested. And um, in a case where you need to survive, you can try these drugs. So my point is, if the experimental drugs that can actually heal people or help people survive or live longer... If those drugs were not allowed, why would you allow experimental drugs for transitioning, especially on minors, on young people who still have a lot of years ahead of them? That would be my question. Now, these points are kind of like speculative. I'm not saying I know for a fact that this is what is happening, but just by putting two and two together, that is what I can come up with. So please let me know your thoughts on that question, because this is very concerning. How they're playing would you in do fiction this? And, and these people are now dealing in facts, you know, having your entire life ruined and people do not understand um, all the medical issues that come from this. And I, like it was that one stunning Reddit post, I think you covered it on your show as well, where this woman was just so shocked that her 20 year old who had been on hormones and um, had gone through all these various cosmetic procedures was now depressed, didn't want to come out of their room and said, my child doesn't even have sexual urgings, like 20, 20 year old and suicidal. Yeah, because they were 13, you started do, you, you block them from going through puberty. My child now has a micro penis, or they, which they don't tell you about, right? You, there is no going back. You've now got a micro penis. You're, you're sexually dysfunctional. Um, and these are the topics that, for whatever reason, Big Pharma is allowed to lie about. And it's stunning to me that if you were a drug dealer on the streets and you harmed a bunch of people with your drugs, you're going to go to prison, right? Mm -hmm. The person who sold the drugs to Mac Miller, the rapper, is facing prison time. And yet Big Pharma execs always just have to pay a fine, right? We lied to you, we ruined your life, we harmed you, we killed some people, we caused the opioid crisis, now we're causing the gender crisis, because it is a crisis that we're on the brink of. But all we have to do is pay a fine. Yeah. 
Where, where is the justice in that? You want to talk about social justice? Yeah, you would think, uh, if you didn't know any better, that this would be an issue that left and right could unite on because the left, they're supposed to hate big corporations. Mm. This is pharmaceutical industry. They make billions of dollars. Like, let's hold them accountable. Shouldn't we all be on the same page? Um, but it is very interesting that the one industry, the one corporation, the one, you know, billion-dollar interest that the left will circle the wagons around and defend to the hilt is, uh, is the pharmaceutical industry. Mm. And it's a conspiracy. It is an actual conspiracy um, against children in particular. And it's not just the pharmaceutical. It's, it's the pharmaceutical industry alongside the medical industry, broadly speaking. This includes doctors and then uh, counselors, psychiatrists. They're all kind of, they're all making a lot of money off of this. There's, there's a lot of money to be made. I mean, if you, if you start with a six-year-old boy who's confused about his gender, um, you could clarify things for him and say, oh, no, you're a boy and that's okay. And he'll be fine. And he'll get over it, and, and, and you will and get paid. Live a happy life, but well, there's no money get, to be made. Mm -hmm. in that, you know, it, but if you were to fuel that confusion, now that's that's millions of dollars down the line for therapists, doctors, pharmaceutical industry. Never stops. Yeah, you become a big part, big pharma patient for life. It never stops. You know, there's no like you're not going to need something to deal with what you did to your body early on. There's always gonna be something. And really, I think for most people, it ends up lifelong mental prescriptions is what it, what really happens. Um, Matt, as a- Again, I was saying in my old video that this thing, when these people come on these platforms to share this information, it's not from a place of hate. It's not from a place of we, we absolutely hate people. That's why we're saying this. It's from a place of concern. And I would say it's from a place of love, as a matter of fact. Final question to you. After doing this documentary, seeing the how it's been received in the public sphere, are you optimistic or are you pessimistic about this conversation that we're having? Uh, Short-term pessimistic, just because I think that the the trend that we're on right now is is not going to be re reversed overnight. I mean, we're talking about the, the generation over generation um, doubling, and I think that's going to continue for a while. But Long term, I'm optimistic because I, I think that this is a fight we can actually win. I, I don't say that about every fight in the culture, um, but this is one we can actually win. And because gender ideology is so toxic and damaging and in, in, in insane in a way that almost everyone intuitively recognizes, but they've been scared into silence. Mm -hmm. uh, what we tried to show in the film is that all you have to do is just stand up in front of it, look it in the face and ask it a few basic questions and it collapses in on itself. <laughs> like, so what's it's very a woman? beatable. <laughs> Lots of people um, can't answer. It's not something we're gonna win by flipping a switch or win it overnight, but, but we can win it. We just have to have a little bit of uh, courage, I suppose. That's the most optimism I've ever seen from you, Matt Walsh. That's the most you're gonna get. That's, That's the most it. I'm ever yeah. gonna get, yeah. It's 50% <laughs> optimism, I will take it. Ladies and gentlemen, in a word, this documentary is illuminating. Be sure to check out What is a Woman on whatisawoman.com and make sure to purchase the What is a Woman book, which is releasing on June 14th. It goes even deeper into the interviews and the topics that are covered in the documentary. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining me on this segment. Okay, yeah, that was a good one by Matt Walsh and Candice Owens. You know, people say Candice Owens is rude. She doesn't have the interests of her people in mind. Lots of conversations and hate and criticism for her. You know, you always have to look at the root cause of anything. Like, what is feeling this? Why does she talk in the way she talks? Why does she act in the way she acts? She She's pregnant here. She has a husband. She has a family. She could just be in her house doing family stuff but she's out here talking and pushing and following through with all these conversations why do you think she's doing all of this it has to be from a place of concern it has to be from a place of concern like what they were saying about africa it's not even a lie i'm african if you go to africa it's not abstract it's not like some africa some people have perspective of africans in the jungle that don't know anything about civilization it's not even in that context just go to africa land in lagos nigeria ask somebody random just somebody random try to explain to them the concept of what is going on in american or western civilization try to explain it to them and see if they're going to understand they'll be like uh you're gonna lose them basically you're just gonna lose them anyways let me know your thoughts on that video i think it was a good one but let me know your thoughts if you have anything to correct to share and or you want us to check out another one feel free to let me know in the comment section that being said um I didn't tell you, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel and have a very wonderful day. Peace.